Welcome to Conversations for Our Time with the Quiet Sun team, John and George. This is podcast number 35 and part nine of the GSM series. So um, <clears throat> it's been a while since we've done a podcast, a few weeks, um, lots of stuff happening. I've been away uh, in, the, in the middle of kind of moving went away to an amazing off-grid um, retreat in Wales, which is, I highly recommend the place. It's called Spirit Horse, absolutely beautiful, in a very um, pristine Welsh valley. Lots of really deep um, meditative, shamanic, tantric practices, along with a sweat lodge. Um, and yeah, it's epic. it was epic. It really has shifted a lot within me within my deeper self so um i've come back from that fresh and renewed and ready to kind of um take on the next challenges in my life but also i've realized <clears throat> you know a lot of well everything that holds me back is myself or my need to be right or you know Whatever the stuff is that you have in your head. And I'm merely saying this for people to understand that, you know, our progress and our evolution is is always internal. You know, as soon as we give away or surrender to these things that we think keep us safe, the quicker our external environment changes. Um, you know, and I've been doing this for about 15 years, so, and I'm still learning. Just like with growing food, you know, you're constantly being surprised. Um, so it's a beautiful journey and it's hard at times. <clears throat> and I think, um, you know, if we are to create the world that we want, we have to, first of all, face the reality is that we can't change people. Um, and secondly, you know, no matter what's going on around you, if you're <clears throat> in the now and in that place where you can find solace, then <clears throat> it's a lot, it's the long route, isn't it? It's not trying to get people to do what you want them to do, it's doing what you really resonate and connect with. And then the universe, you'll, you'll be like a magnet, you'll just attract the right people the right situations and um this is what life is about this is what the ancients taught us so it's a great journey and george is um tuning in from uh ko chang i believe um in thailand he went out there about a week ago so both of our lives are changing rather rapidly and um, it's good that we can continue these podcasts, even though we're thousands of miles apart. So, George, how are you doing? Tell me how Thailand's been so far before we get into the podcast. Cheers, John. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great out here. Um, the weather is a bit hit or miss. It, you know, it does rain a lot uh, here. First couple of days, nice weather, then it just turns. It's, there's a lot of rain. Um that's happening, but it's yeah. I'm in Koh Chang at the moment, and it's probably people are wondering why am I why am I here in Southeast Asia? It's probably the worst place to be with regards to Grand Sale and Minimum. Um, the reason why I'm here uh, is is a multi reasons, multiple reasons why I'm here. But I had a call in to go out here basically like now and do it now. It's quite quick. I've been thinking about it for about a year and a half, um, and also I do hope the connection is is the best it can be because we're obviously far away. Um, but I had a call in to go like now, to do it now, because there's still time. We've got Grand Sale, we're in Grand Sale minimum, but it's the big the beginning of it and we've got time. So I had a call in to go out a call in to go out here to focus on myself. And everything you've said I, I absolutely do 
you know, with you. But we're on a journey. We're fo- we've got to focus on ourselves and, and we've got to learn all the lessons. Um, so I've come here at the right time. There's uh, still time for us to, for me to basically sort out what I need uh, during the Grand Solar Minimum period. Um, and you are talking about spirit, whole spirit, whole shit. It's a lovely place um, to go. I nearly went there a couple of times. And I do believe um, that they do a bit of underground ayahuasca in that place. Um, and I nearly went there at one point. But it's a lovely place. We all need to do this. We all need to have a break while we can do to focus on ourselves and do that introspective work. Um, and it helps us to grow and evolve and helps us decide what that next step is in life. And this is where I'm, I am at right now. Um, I'm going to have a calling to go back to the UK at some point. Uh, at the right time, I just think everything happens um, in divine timing. Um, so, yeah, this is, that's you know where I am um, at the moment, John. Brilliant, Jules. Thanks for the update. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, right, what we're going to be talking about today is um, we're going to be, this is going to be the last um, part of the Grand Solar Minimum series. Mm. There is obviously still debate whether we're in a Grand Solar Minimum. But everything I'm looking at, and, you know, I, I trust the people that I get this information from, um, namely, Diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch. Check out his um, channels, Oppenheimer Ranch and Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Magnetic Reversal News have actually just been given a deal by Rumble. So all of his videos from YouTube are going to be going there. And they've offered to actually um, <clears throat> promote his videos on lots of other alternative channels so that's really good i mean he is you know out of everyone that i've followed and obviously i haven't followed everyone out there but everyone that i've followed that deals with this subject he's been the most spot on with what's going on um you know from earthquakes to volcanoes to the the weather patterns the jet streams you know precipitation levels he's been calling it years ahead of time so there are people like Ben Davison who are saying that we're not in Grand Solar Minimum, but um, although I used to follow him, I think he's a little bit of a fraud, um, and that's my personal opinion. But, um, you know, there's, there's there's activities that he's doing that just kind of call into, na- call into question his motives um, and his own narrative, um, and that's not to defame him at all. It's just that we've got to go with our gut and not with... Um, being dazzled by science, you know, because we all know what it's like to be dazzled by science. We've experienced that over the last four years. So we're actually going to be discussing uh, the book Cold Times, Preparing for the Mini Ice Age by Anita Bailey. Um, And although I haven't read all of this book, I've read quite a lot of it. And she's, she's extremely experienced in many different types of um like subjects and ways of living. And she's a prepper, basically, um, amongst other things. So she, the book takes you through everything from what's happened in the past, what's going to potentially happen in the future based on these cycles. Um, she kind of mentions John Casey's work. And then... So she lays out what could potentially happen in a coming mini ice age. And that's still yet to be debated about how severe that's going to be. But then she also mentions about what you can do to prepare. So how you build community, how you take care of yourself, how you grow your food, um, how you protect yourself, how you connect with other people, what types of people you need around you all that type of stuff. So it's a really comprehensive book. I know that um, George has read it from cover to cover. Um, And I think, although a lot of people might not want to look at this, 
or even consider it, it's really important that we're doing this because I think we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how severe it's going to be. Um, personally, I don't think it's going to be that severe, but we are experiencing a lot of cloud recently, and that is impacting, you know, every every small little thing that happens, especially the climatic ones, have a cascading effect. So if you can't grow food on a large scale, and mine and George's thing is always going back to growing your own food, being self-sufficient. If we can't grow on a large scale, which we're seeing a lot of these farms are folding, you know, they're not being able to plant out, their crops aren't growing, they're being smashed up by hail, they're being flooded, et cetera, et cetera. We need to find ways of growing on a smaller scale. So books like these are really vital to showing us ways that we can prepare with what's actually happening in the climate. So that's a quick introduction. I'll let Jules take the lead and then I'll kind of chip in here and there as, as and when it's needed. You're up, George. Yeah, there, I'm just there. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm just unmuting it um, because of the feedback. Um, yeah, no, you're totally right. I agree with you. So I'm going to be introducing the book uh, by Anita Bailey, Cold Time. So preparing for the mini ice age. Um, and I'm going to pick out and read a few bits uh, from the book to give you an idea what she's talking about. Um, I, I always say that, you know, I don't always agree with everything that's written in the book. Um, but however, this book is probably in terms of survival and an overall perspective, it's one of the best that, that is out there. It, it goes, uh, it really goes into detail of how to survive. It's not just a survival handbook. It's a bit more broader than that. Um, but she, she, she actually breaks things apart. This is what we do. This is what we like doing is breaking things apart and explaining you know, she's turned to history. She's put evidence there. And, and a lot of that evidence, check out. If if you uh, read the book and you're reading through this, oh, I'm going to check this out. It's there. It's, it's literally there, right? You can find that information anywhere on the internet. So it's not just a survival book. It's just, it's, uh, a, broad, it's a bit more broader than that. So um, she's talking about all of these things, but she's got first-hand experience of these things, and she's done it in terms of self-sufficiency. So she knows exactly what she's talking about. She's done a, a lot of uh, what she's talking about in the book. Um, but it also has a lot of good knowledge in there about the Grand Silo Minimum, um, previous ones. Um, and what has happened since 2016 and 17, because that has been the turning point um, where global cooling around about that time has started. So in terms of the damage that it's done to crops and general information of the negative effects um, that has already started just before we entered that grand silent minimum, even, even, up, even the steps coming into um, the grand silent so, minimum where things were changing yeah, and rapidly. And they weren't getting reported, you know, in the mainstream news. And it's not gonna really. Um, she goes into new the new reality that we face. Okay, she gives her perspective uh, along with a lot of history. Okay, she's encouraging people to adapt, and that is the key thing here: um, adaptation. Uh, that that word when I read the book just hit me because it. it it opens up everything. Um, and first, we've got to accept it. Yeah. Then we have to realize, right, it, not just for grand solar minimum, but for any topics um, like our own belief structure. Yeah. The more we are willing to throw down on the floor what we already know and what we think is true, the more we can grow and adapt and change, and I think that's a bit of the Buddha philosophy as well. Um, what we think we know, 
you know, it's, everything is there to be learned. Okay, so there are far too many in this world, right, who are way too comfortable with how they live. And that goes against, and you know, they're already going against, I'm talking about society in general, that go against natural law and nature. And nature knows this, yeah? She knows this, and, and she's going to give the biggest, right? In the words of Anita Bailey, the Zen slap is on its way, folks, right? And I'm sure society, you know, we're not, we're not preaching in any kind of way. We're doing this at the bottom of our hearts, yeah? But society have had it far too easy for far too long, abusing the earth, okay? And that wake-up call is well and truly on its way. Okay, so I think you'll agree, John, you know, that adaptability is the key for getting through the grand solar minimum. We may have different ideas of the severity, you know, uh, but looking at Anita Bailey, John L. Casey, Diamond, Full Night Bahama Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, you've got uh, Adapt 2030, Ice Age Farmer, they're all thinking sort of the, 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 the severity of it, you know, uh, along the same lines, because we've got a lot of factors in, involved here of getting through the grand solar minimum. The rays that are coming in due to the weakening of the magnetosphere, the magnetic excursion that is happening, and the cooling periods that are cyclically, uh, that cyclically occur after them. You know, the most likely release at some point of the Beaufort Chara and the harsh weather and the possible food scarcity that comes with it all. All of it is cyclical, right? And the more we are able to adapt to, to, to do whatever we can to survive through it, however bad it gets, you know, the more likely we could actually thrive during it, John. Yeah, George. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well said, mate. <sighs> I think this is really interesting. And what I was thinking as you were saying that last bit about adaptation. This isn't just about survival. This is this whole thing is about evolution on the cosmic scale. <clears throat> the universe, just like the Earth, is constantly wanting to evolve. That's its purpose. Um, the universe is like this big kind of cradle that holds life. And whatever way you want to see it, whether you want to see it, it's like a holographic universe or whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is that everything that's happening, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, everything in between, has a purpose. And our evolution has to... Well, our evolution can only occur through hardship. You know, the Buddha said suffering is enlightenment. This is this is what adaptation is. You know, things don't adapt when they're good. When things are good and easy, we don't adapt. <laughs> we just, you know, sail along, right? But it's like you need the wind behind your sails to be able to actually move forward. So, and sometimes you have to go, you know, through difficult storms. So <clears throat> we can look at this at the surface layer of the, you know, we have to adapt and survive and it's going to be really difficult and all that kind of stuff. But if we look at the, <clears throat> you know, if, if an alien came to the earth and they'd see how we were treating it and they see these huge farms that are just raping the land, using these big industrial machines and throwing chemicals on them, the alien would be like, this is completely counterintuitive to life, right? Um, this, for me, is the way that nature or the universe, whatever you want to call it, is saying, you need to change your ways. So I'm going to send all of this to you for you to actually really go within and start asking yourself the question, 
what is a healthy, abundant life? Because it's not the way we live right now. You know, some people are benefiting from it, but most people are scraping by. And whether or not you have lots of money or not, that's not the point, or you have a comfortable home. It's how you feel inside. And most people don't really like their life. You know, they might kid themselves. I mean, this is why we've got social media, because social media is like a way to <clears throat> lead like a double life, you know, to show people what you want them to see. I was having a conversation with someone, one of our friends earlier today, <clears throat> when I went over to the big greenhouse. And when we're when we've got this kind of bravado up and this this kind of caricature, we never really evolve. It's only when we surrender and we make ourselves vulnerable that we can actually move forward in life. Because and 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 this is the problem I see in society. So getting back to what you kind of said, George, is all these things, the grand solar minimum, the waning magnetosphere. Everything in life is deeply connected. And the purpose behind these things, I believe, is because humanity needs a shake-up and we need to change the way we live. This is how things work, in my opinion. I think most ancient beliefs probably would have alluded to a similar type of um, ethos on it. So I'm kind of like... You know, there's still apprehension within me, but at the same time, and I have the moments, I'm sure you do as well, George, of negativity, that everything's, you know, going wrong. But actually, when I look within myself, you know, when I went away on this retreat and I'm in the passion of meditation where I'm chanting really strongly, I feel this thing within me, like this vibrational frequency, which is saying, no, man, this is exactly where you need to be. This is your purpose this is your destiny this is like the divine intervention and you're here to give a gift to the world and if you completely embrace yourself in that then you'll be protected so that's my kind of stance <laughs> my my more kind of uh anthroposophical stance on it yeah i i i don't think there's a a single thing there where I disagree with you. It's absolutely spot on, uh, especially with regards to society. Um, and uh, they they need a rocket up their arse. To, to be blunt, to, to be clear, it's, it's, it's more than a shake-up because we always talk about inner work. Right? We all, I always talk about the dismantling of existing belief structures, right, and it's one thing that they don't want to seem to let go of and do that work and admit that they were wrong. You know, it's it's a pride thing. It needs to grow. A go pride is an absolute sin because it can ruin your life, right? And it can do. It can really mess people's lives up. And they stick to these old beliefs, even if it kills them. Yeah, we've got to change, you know. And you're right about nature. Everything, we can't live our lives, you know, um, the way that we've been doing. And then society needs to drop those beliefs, build new ones, admit that they were wrong, even in people in the so-called truth movement, without me sounding preachy. That's not where I'm coming from, and I hope that is the case. I'm not coming from a preachy point of view. But their views and their stuff and pointing towards heart, and and we always say in geoengineering, solar radiation management, whatever, they're going to get themselves into a very, very difficult situation, and they're not empowering themselves in any kind of way. So they're getting for a rude awakening. There's only a small percentage of people, and it has been more since I joined, well, I'm not part of the truth community anymore, I just do my own thing. But more and more people are getting to know about it. Um, and that's the key thing. We have to know about it and we have to accept about it because Anita Bailey talks about it. She's, she's talking about the transition to cold. It's already started, which is already happening. You know, but 
for the people who are in the know of the grand solar minimum, the most common questions, as you touched upon, is is when and how bad, you know. And we have said these in, in, in podcasts from the beginning that we made it clear, especially later on in the podcast, that we don't know exactly what is going to happen. We can look at what is most likely to happen with all the factors involved, which we've just talked about. And we can look at the history of the Earth, and this is what the Nia Bailey has done, and we can see where it is heading towards. And we don't have that crystal ball, unfortunately, and we would love to say for sure, you know, but we don't. We don't know. Um, And all we can say is it doesn't look good, you know, without injecting fear to anyone. It just doesn't, you know. But we can prepare as much as possible. But Anita is saying that that the next mini ice age has already begun. This is what she's saying. And she knows about it more than we do. Um, However, you know, location is important. It depends where you are. We have touched upon this in the past. Um, It depends where you are. And if, if, you know, if I was living with a family in Iceland or near the Madrid fault line, or if I was actually living in Southeast Asia with, with, with a, a family, so somewhere like in the Indonesia uh, area, I'd be worried. I wouldn't want to live here with a family. Um, and although, as I say, I'm in Thailand right now, it's okay for now, um, and I do have a plan, and I hope that plan will come to fruition um, in terms of creating some money and buying that land in Essex. That is the game. That is the end goal, um, to create a community of my own where I can have two of my best friends there. And between us, we, we've got what it takes to get through whatever's coming. And I can't see how that plan might work because it's all folding nicely. I'm listening to my intuition, you know, um, but well, I had a calling from my spirit to say, now, do it now. Go to Thailand now. Go away for a bit. Um, so here's the window. Do it now. So we have to listen to our gut instincts. We have to. Uh, but in general, these places won't be safe. Um, and that's why location is important. I'm going to touch upon something um, just very quickly. So the book, I'm just going to read something out. So the book is... Uh, the most basic aspect of your primary pre- preparation for calm times is where you live, and I completely agree with her. Clearing, you know, clearly, like uh, keeping warm, will be an, an enormous part of this process. Preparation, and protection from weather extremes. For us, if you're going to have livestock as well, we're going to take all this in, into consideration. Our food stores and our crops. Um, all of this needs to be taken into factor. Um, commonplace modern homes and trailers. In her view, it's going to fail, yeah, in the times to come. So, and I saw the word adjustments hit me. You know, you've got to adjust, yeah, uh, for the immense coming times. That could be possible. We have to transition to it. But your location is first, right? I'm going to read um, something very important right, uh, in the book. So, several reports indicate that zones north of 30 degree latitude in the Northern Hemisphere and south of the 30 degree in the Southern Hemisphere will not be reliable growing regions as the weather turns, okay? You can put your location utilizing online maps or if you've got a proper map of the world, that 30 degree level is pretty easy to pinpoint, okay? And most of the US is is in the cold zone uh, above that, okay? This is just to give people an idea, right? Except for the, the South Texas and Lower Florida. So in Europe, China, Japan, and Russia, okay? These areas are likely to be progressively less reliable for, for, for the currently grown crops. There's even problems already, right, with regards to that. And it's been happening, you can say, years now, okay? The zone between 30 degree and 40 north latitude south in the southern hemisphere will probably be livable but severely limited by unstable weather. I'm not going to get into the shape of the earth because there's still people that uh, you know are, are making this part of the effect because of the shape of the earth and I'm not getting into it 
um, because it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. We've got to look at the history, okay, regardless of that shape of the earth. And people will turn their noses at this information because of the shape of the earth and then not, not learn from it. Okay, that's to your own detriment. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Um, but we'll probably, yeah, so above 40 degrees latitude will be the realm of polar bears, wolves, and, and not much else. Although in the past cold times, coastal Alaska was actually relatively warm and green, which is very, very interesting, I find. There are, in terms of serious ground solar minimums, there are areas in the past that still had four seas, yeah? We just, just don't know where they're going to be. So major crops currently grown above 30 degree latitude include, includes like corn, wheat, both spring or winter, soybeans and potatoes. Potatoes is going to be the ones that solve you. Yeah? It, it, it's going to help you. They're not on the Dr. Savi Alkaline um, uh, diet, but this is survival food. Okay, Rice is usually produced in lowland flood zone farms in the U.S. is currently warmer regions, okay, only a little north of 30 degrees now. Um, this is important what I'm saying, um, because in terms of that, you know, Europe is going to be affected by the cold times as well, this is what I'm saying. But if you do have animals, you know, beef, chicken and hogs are also above the line. This is a picture in the book that gives you the idea of the latitude. Um, so ultimately, this means that prices will go up. Well, that's been happening, right? It's been happening for years, and it, it did go up abruptly very quickly. Um, since the food production will concentrate closer to the equator, and it makes sense why, okay? Which means creating farms where none currently exist, both costly and time-sensitive, because it can take years, okay? So it also means that your ability to produce your own food in the northern parts of the US and in Canada will be limited by weather ex extremes, okay, by weather extremes, but not impossible. It's not going to be impossible to grow food, but in my opinion, wherever you are in the world, but you're going to be damaged. There's damage limitations, okay? Anita Bailey was talking about her home, uh, that is about 36 north of Mattitude. So it's well within the cold zone, but certainly not in the worst parts of it, okay? So we already have four very different seasons. It is beginning to be like that with moderately cold winters and hot, humid summers. Um, and the book says spring and fall are generally mild and pleasant, okay? Wherever you are, this is going to be going to change a little bit, right? but it is likely that, that during the cold times, winter for us, Winters, or wherever we are, is going to get colder, and it's been happening. Winters have been coming earlier. For me, in my understanding, the winters in England have been coming sooner, and they've been finishing later, okay? So she also goes on to say summer may have become mild with some spike in hot freezing periods. Spring and fall will probably be, be cool to frosty with high flood risks, but Otherwise, it could be okay. So she might be okay where she is, where she's saying, but a growing season will likely be shortened from, from six months to four months. Well, in my opinion, I don't know what you think about that in John in England. In my opinion, that, that's already happening um, with the risk because people, their crops are growing really slow because they're not having that right, right condition. Um, with the risk of the loss of wool loving crops in both late spring and early, early fall. So all that makes sense to me, okay? Um, and I know that you're going to add to that, John. Yeah, Jules, thanks for that. Um, yeah, and remember, this is, these are guidelines. Yeah, I mean, everything she's saying kind of ties in with a lot of the other stuff that I've read and I've researched, but they're just guidelines. And the other thing that, you know, here in the UK, we're protected. One, because we're an island, so we get more heat from the oceans. It's very different to being inland. You know, if you don't know anything about kind of um, climate maps, is the further inland you are, the hotter it gets in the summer and the colder it gets during the winter. When you're near an ocean or a large body of water, 
the temperatures are regulated so you don't get these such high extremes. The UK is also fed by the Gulf Stream. So 50 degrees latitude in the UK is very different than 50 degrees latitude in North America. You know, 50 degrees latitude in North America, it gets down to minus 30. It doesn't happen in the UK and very rarely in Europe. It does happen in Russia and China, but we have the Atlantic Ocean to help regulate it. So all these things, taking all these things into account is really important. Um, and the other thing I want to add as well is if you're growing on a small scale, you will be less affected by these changes. The big farms are gonna all gonna fall, I guarantee you, unless they're gonna unless they they um, transition over to you know fake food or the other way of regenerative farming, the, the current industrial model is failing and it will fail. So any farmers out there, it, it, you're just you, you're not going to be able to maintain what you had before. But again, this is a good thing, not necessarily for the farmers, but for humanity as a whole. If we all scale down and we're all growing on like one, two, three acres, you know, that is actually the way, in my opinion, that we can go because it's a lot easier to manage. Yeah. You know, we can create cyclical closed loop systems within those farms quite easily. And I will actually be showing a few of these things on my course. I'm launching at the end of the year, so watch out for that. But yeah, George, all really important information. Um, we shouldn't be scared by it. We should just use it to prepare. Um, we are actually running out of time now. Um, so perhaps we might do one more, um, but we can update people on that. But it's been great. Um, lots of really good information. Get the book, Cold Times, Preparing for the Mini Ice Age by Anita Bailey. Um, after this podcast, I've been, I'll be encouraged to read a little bit more of it. And also look at the history of wherever you are, because that is a really good indicator of what's going to potentially happen in the future. Connect with your community, learn how to grow food, prepare in every way you can, because even if it is, even if it's not as bad as we think it's going to be, it's actually really cool to be prepared and it's really cool to be self-sufficient and you, your community you'll have much stronger ties, you'll have deeper friendships when you go through this with someone else. Me and George's relationship has just got deeper and deeper because we're both invested in this.